Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, and we are here at the Sales by Five office. These guys here have a nice DVD about Twitter. Pimp it out. And I'm with uh, Nick Anthony of Papulis. I don't know if you can see the menu here. And we've got a nice little spread that he, he uh, contributed to the pity party. And we're going to drink a couple wines that are just chilling here at the, uh, at the office. So, uh, Nick, tell me a little about yourself and about Papulis and all that. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining. Uh, my name's Nick. Uh, I own Papulis Greek Grill. It's, uh, I like to call it a labor of love. Uh, third generation restaurateur here in San Antonio. We, uh, a couple years we'll have been here for 100 years in my family. Grandfather, Papuli means grandfather in Greek, uh, came over here in 1911, opened in 1912, and we've been serving food ever since. One, one member of our family or another uh, for almost 100 years, so it's kind of cool. Now, so they moved to San Antonio or they? Straight to San Antonio. Straight, straight to San Antonio. Athens, yeah. Straight from Athens. Outstanding. So it's been kind of fun uh, being that heritage, and that's what Papuli's is all about. It's about Maintaining and, and you know building on the heritage that we, uh, that my family brought, and you know everybody's got a grandfather, so it's kind of that story of what did your grandparents teach you? What did your grandfather teach you? My grandmother used to make all these foods for us at home. Awesome. So I grew awesome. up. I grew up with this stuff. All right. So tell us what we got here. We got a nice little spread. So tell us what we got. Okay. Uh, on this end, we've got dolmas, which are stuffed grape leaves, and they're stuffed with seasoned rice mix and whatnot. Uh, we have our homemade limoni sauce, which is a, just a lemon egg sauce that we. Uh, it's really good. When it kind of goes together with the grape leaves really well. Um, this is traditional. Excuse me. This is our jalapeno fire hummus. Uh, we take hummus and then we add uh, pickled jalapenos to it, and it becomes voila, uh, jalapeno fire hummus. And these are pita chips. So we actually take pita chips and we fry them up in our cholesterol-free uh, vegetable oil. It's really good stuff. Here we have tiropita, which is literally means cheese pie, and spanikopita, which means spinach pie. And it's pita, uh, not pita, excuse me, uh, filo dough uh, with the cheeses stuffed inside. We wrap it up, bake it, and tzatziki sauce, which is the cucumber uh, sauce that we make. It goes to compliments. It's really well. The sauce you get in your here sandwich. Right. right. And then down the end, we have our traditional hummus, uh, again with pita chips. Awesome. Now, I've had some of this stuff. I haven't had the, uh, I've had the jalapeno hummus. It's outstanding. I love it. Um, I haven't had the cheese, but I've had the spinach of this. I really like it. I'm about to try this, the, uh, the uh, was it domas? Domas, yeah. Domas. Never had them before, so I'm about to have those. And uh, then the regular hummus. Now, what we got here, Nick's already dipped into the wine a little bit. Um, First one we're going to do here is the Primo Amore. It's a Sangiovese Merlot blend. Uh, I have no way to zoom, but it's a 51% Sangio, 49% Merlot. It's from uh, Sicily, and it's a uh, 2005. They, they call it a dry red wine. Yes, we're drinking out of some plastic, but you know what? Like I was telling Nick earlier, it has a nice big wide open mouth, so you can really get the bouquet going. You might smell a little plastic, but um, we'll see how it is. So I'm getting nice, nice spiciness out of it, um, a little bit of, a little bit of earthiness, and some dark fruits. Um, you've had it already, so how do you like it? I haven't taken these glasses yet, so I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> well, you know what? It I doesn't like it. I like it. A you lot. like it? Okay. So this is the thing about the pity party is that. Um, I'm not really worried about someone coming in and smelling and telling me exactly what the, it's. Do you like it or not? And if you can tell me some stuff about why you like it, that's cool. So uh, let's check it out. I like it because it's solid. It's, it's a, a bowl flavor. It's hard. And it's, uh, it's really good. You know, and I agree. It's it's uh, it's not overpowering. Um, it's really it's a good, uh, pretty full-bodied uh, wine. Sangiovese is a great grape. Uh, you might have remembered a couple weeks ago we did the Chianti. That's what the, um, ooh, that's lightning. We got some rain finally in San Antonio. Um, we had the, the Chianti a couple weeks ago, and uh, that's all, all Sangiovese, and uh, that was pretty good. This is really good. The Merlot helps soften it a little bit. I really like it. Uh, I totally would give it, I'd say probably an 88 as far as the score. Um, so, yeah. So now let's try this Sauvignon Blanc. Now we've got the kind of run the mill, Kendall Jackson, KJ as we say in the industry. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc 2006 from California and just remember that um, anything that says California means it can come from anywhere in California. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. 
All right, uh, KJ, you know, they make quality wines. There's nothing bad about them, but they're, they're kind of like, you know, widely available and everybody knows who they are. All right, so unlike what you'll get from like New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, I'm not really getting that grassiness. As a matter of fact, I'm not really getting much. Now, this was in the refrigerator probably forever, and it's been out for maybe an hour, so it's warmed up a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of fruit, maybe a little apple, but uh, not much out of it. I mean, I, I don't dislike KG, KG. Actually, I do like it most of the time, so let's see how it tastes. So, then we got some, a little bit of acid there. It's not, not a lot. Um, just, just an hint of acid. Um, it's got some sweetness, but it really disappears uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know how much these are, so um, I'd have to, you know, see what what it is. This is what we have here at Sales by Five. Decided to use their wine for once. Um, it really disappears really quick, and it doesn't really stay with you. You know, it's serviceable, and, um, you know, it probably would work really well with some of the stuff. So we're going to pair it up. Uh, this is really the one I want to pair up with some stuff. So we're talking about pairing this up with the uh, with the jalapeno, with the hummus, right? You know what? I think that the, the, the heat and the jalapeno is going to overpower the flavor. So maybe with the Sangiovese? Probably the Sangiovese. That's what I've been doing because I think they complement okay. the uh, woodiness of this. Would you characterize this as woody at all? It's a dark, dark fruit. You know, now that I smell a little more of it, I'm no expert, so I'm just asking. There, there's definitely probably some wood in influence because you can smell kind of maybe a vanilla aspect to it. And, and what happens is with the oak, it'll it'll impart like creaminess and vanilla overtones, so either aromas or flavors to the wine. So. Um, that's the only thing that I would pair with this. Everything else would pair well with the, uh, with the white. With the white? Yeah. Alright, so we're going to take the, uh, the pita chip and we're going to do a little... This is some excellent stuff right here. It's a little hot. But I love, I love, I love hot stuff. You know, I, I really like it because the um, the wine is really enhancing the flavor of not only the the hummus but even the pita chips. It's it's really um, working a really good balance. Uh, you're getting a little bit of that uh, spiciness, and I think it really works really well with it. Uh, I agree that maybe the Sauvignon Blanc wouldn't really work well with the spiciness, but if we had something like, um, uh, off the top of my head, I just I already knew what I wanted to say, and I can't remember. Um, if we had maybe an Alsatian wine, uh, that would really goes really well with uh, with spiciness and Rieslings, uh, German Rieslings that are that are sweet, sweeter wines do really well with pairing the spicy food to help that to help. If it's really really spicy, yes, it helps. It helps uh, really counterbalance it. It's a really good mixture. Um, that's why a lot of times if you go to like a uh, Asian food or Mexican food and they have the spiciness, um, Rieslings or, or not not sweet wines, not dessert wines, but but that wines with that bit of sweetness like a Riesling, like a German Riesling, work really well with that. Would you characterize crisp, sweet? Yes. Yeah. Not 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 sugary. Right. Not sugary sweet. So um, all right. So. With this, I, do, I eat, do I eat the whole thing like this or I open it up? No, you eat it like that. You eat like this, okay. It looks so, like a cigar, actually, a little small cigar, but they're good. They're, I've never had this, so I, you, I might not like it, but we'll yeah, see, you know? See. I think that will go well with the, uh, with the white. It's got a peculiar taste. It's better with the lemon. You know what? At first, like the Greek, the, 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 Greek, the grape leaves, you know, they have that bit of sourness to it. And at first I was going to like, oh man, I'm not going to like this. When I started eating it, I like how the rice and the uh, and the, the leaves really counterbalance each other. Grape leaves can be pretty tart, and that's why we do the lemon sauce on top. So the lemon Got it. 
encounters the darkness of the great light. So that and the lemon sauce with the light also again. All right, so let's good pairing. And I don't have a fork for you. We're just, no, we'll just get out there. Get all get messy. Yep. Get all messy here. And here's a napkin. <laughs> And the lemon is uh, designed to really complement the flavor of the, uh, the grape leaves. You know what? Um, the lemon really does a great job with uh, with the grape leaf there. Um, I really like that. Well, it worked with the wine. With the wine. That's my question. We're about to roll out four new Greek wines. Uh, they're, they're on their way down from New York. They, they finally hit the deck in New York. They're coming from Greece. Um, and we're excited about it. And there will be two reds and two whites. And then we'll also have a, a uh, Vino Verde from uh, Portugal and uh, another one from, uh, from Spain. You know what? Now that the wine's opening up a little more and it's paired with this, I would totally recommend this pairing. Um, you get a little bit of sweetness with the wine and it counterbalances with the tartness of the lemon and the grape leaves. I think it's an excellent, excellent pairing. Uh, I didn't score this wine, by the way. Uh, and my initial score would be 84, but pairing it with the food, I'd probably bump it up a couple more points, so like an 86. Um, I think it's great. Now, I think I've got the cheese, because it's the lighter one, right? The right. spinach is the darker. Okay. Right. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep sucking down the red. <laughs> the red's good. I really like that red. So again, you've got the little sweetness of the Sauvignon Blanc and a little bit of the acid working really pretty, 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 pretty well with the cheese. Um, it's a good complement. Um, the acid's cutting through with the cheese. I would actually probably gonna try it with, with the red too because since there's cheese, um, red wines with their tannins help really break down the fats in the cheese. Really get the cheese this time. Can't believe it's raining. I'm loving it. It's awesome. Guys, if you're not from this area of the country, we are like in drought conditions. We're probably on the verge of. We're already in stage three. No, we're at stage three. We're at stage three. Stage four means you can't use water. Like we're all going to be stinking because we can't take a shower. Um, you know what? I, I like the white better. I think I think the red overpowers the flavors too much, um, but um, it's 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 really good. But I would I would totally go with the, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc instead. Why don't you try the, the spinach? Get a lot of spinach with the red and see if that. Okay. You know we're gonna get a little. This is a yeah, it's a spinach. We're gonna get the uh, tzatziki sauce here. We make this tzatziki fresh every day. Really good. I don't know how many pounds of cucumbers we uh, grind up and throw in there? It's quite a bit. Pretty heavy on the garlic too. We we do load it down with some garlic. I really like it. Um, I think with the spinach, even though spinach gives a little bit more oomph, I think I think with the uh, I think with the white. Where put my here we go. Yeah, the, the Sauvignon Blanc works much better with the spinach. Um, have a taste of the regular hummus yet? Pita chips. Pita chips. The regular hummus. I don't know if you see it in the shot, but got the regular hummus here. Mm. That is excellent. I'll be honest, I've had hummus like you buy at the grocery store, and it's usually not very good. Our hummus is not, not your typical hummus. We don't put as much of the tahini sauce, the sesame seed. Uh, uh, basically, it's sesame, uh, here, taste. Okay, yeah. And we don't put as much in there, so you get a little difference 
the consistency is thicker than the paste that you get in a typical Middle Eastern restaurant hummus. So it's in a, it has a different flavor than most hummus. You know, the, 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 the Sauvignon Blanc works excellent with this hummus. Um, it really brings out the flavors of the hummus. Um, I'm really a fan of that. Uh, really one of the first times I ever had hummus was a friend of mine uh, had a little party and she had some hummus and she had bought it at the grocery store. and. It was outstanding, and I tried like a week later to get some hummus at the grocery store, and, and I must not have bought the right brand because it was horrible. And I didn't, I didn't buy it again. Yeah, there are definitely different different styles of hummus. Out there. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, all this food is awesome. Um, I, I'm really not experienced with Greek food much, other than I've had you know those are my my friends in Chicago up on uh, Division Street going to Five Faces at five in the morning and getting euros. And that's about the most experience I had was with the tzatziki sauce. And my last job, we had a gyro with, with the tzatziki, but, you know, this is way better than what I had. Um, and really, you know, Greek food is not something that a lot of people really uh, seek out. And it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of food. And a lot of times it's, you know, like with Greek wine, um, first of all, with, with, the, with the Greek language and, and the alphabet, it's really inaccessible to, like, Americans because we have no clue how to read the Greek alphabet, and even just the names we're just not familiar with, and they're, they're, they're a lot harder to pronounce for us. We've made it a lot easier for folks, and that's, I think, why we're a little bit uh, getting in popularity here in San Antonio, is that you know, we haven't Americanized the food, but we've made it familiar. Uh, okay. So, so, and we're pan-Mediterranean, we're not 100% Greek. Uh, we've got some Italian dishes. We have a wonderful uh, caprese salad uh, with pita bread. It's fantastic. It's been compared to Ruth's Chris. And, you know, I've, I've never been to Ruth's Chris. I've heard about it. Yeah, uh, so I'm sure it's great, but uh, ours is, is good. And so we'll do that. We do a pasta salad. We do uh, uh, Pollo Milano and a Pesca Milano, which is a, a Milano sauce. It's sun dried tomatoes. We mm -hmm. can do it halfway between a chutney and a pesto sauce on top, and we can grill it with that on there. So there's other things that we do, not just pure Greek, which is, again, the veto vote. You know, if you don't know what Greek food is and you don't like it, hey, a shish kebab is steak on a stick. Yeah. That's what we call it. You know, chicken <laughs> on a stick, steak on a stick. For the kids, that is. Uh, for us grown ups, it's, uh, it's kebab or uh, shish kebab or uh, souflaki, as they say in Greek. So we've got some flavors for everybody, literally. Great, great. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun for me. I'm hoping to do some more of these types of things. Um, in the future, um, working with some other people. Actually, uh, we're, we're actually talking with Nick about maybe doing something at Papulis. Uh, I've got some other places looking at doing some live, quote, live uh, wine tastings. It's going to be a normal, you know, a little bit longer than normal, but hope you guys really enjoy this. Sales by Five, they are a great company. Uh, we got Non right over here, Non Palermo, uh, and Palmero. Palmero, not Palermo. I, I, I got Sicily on my mind. Yeah. Um, non Palmero. Uh, if you do go to non Palermo on Twitter, it will tell you you got you got the right guy but the wrong really? account. Really? Yes, yes, he's smart like that. This guy's smart. I'm telling you. Um, got the restaurant mentor over here, by the way. <laughs> you remember Robert? Yeah, Robert from last week. By the way, he you got to they're looking at your chest. <laughs> you know, um, remember this guy from last week? He. You got a restaurant. He's going to help you. How to, he's going to help you know how to make money with it. Trust me on this one. Um, so anyway, so great show. Um, hope to do more things like this. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see everybody again next time.